If you ask me what the most significant sports car enthusiast vehicle that's come out in the last year to year and a half, I would have to say this car, the C8 generation of the Corvette, the new Corvette Stingray. Now, are there faster cars, more expensive cars that have come out? Absolutely. Things like the 992 Turbo S, I drove that and it blew my mind. It was so fast. Uh, McLaren 765 LT, I think is setting records, but a lot of those cars are so far into the six figures, it's not really attainable for the general automotive enthusiast. Whereas this car, the C8 Stingray, is a Corvette, right? That's still a reasonable vehicle, a good sports car that a lot more of the automotive enthusiast population could attain at some point. Now, we've driven this before already. I had the good fortune of attending the media launch last year, beginning of 2020. We're out in Las Vegas, out in these back, amazing back roads in the Valley of Fire in Nevada, and then on the track, at Spring Mountain in a C8 Stingray. So I've done that full in-depth review, the really technical stuff, the cinematic. So make sure you go watch that. I'm really proud of how that turned out. And the main goal for this review now is to see a year later, what is it like? I'm trying it out in the real world now. It's the regular streets, commuting to work, uh, some traffic, just driving day to day, having some fun off stop signs and things like that. Is this still as awesome as I remember? Obviously, when you first drive a brand new generation of an iconic sports car like the C8 and had just come out to the entire world, I was one of the first people to get to experience it, it's gonna be awesome. Driving it out in amazing roads out there and then getting to track it. I mean, you're gonna fall in love with a sports car if you get to track it as hard as you want and it's not your car. So that was definitely a ton of fun. But now, we're spending a week with it here in the real world. Is it still as awesome as I remember it being? Now, this is also coming from somebody who I've, did I have that car back then? No, I bought myself a couple other sports cars, a Shelby GT350R, and I have a new R8 in the garage right now that I haven't been driving because I've had the keys to this C8. So let's do a quick recap of the specs. It is now mid-engined. Obviously, we all know that now for the first time, finally, Chevy went mid-engine for the Corvette platform. That's a big change, right? You don't just kind of take the engine and go, oh, we'll put it back there and it'll be fine. No, big changes, re-engineered. Uh, LT2, it's derived from the LT1, 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8, derived from the pushrod LT1 that you would find in the C7 Stingray, and I believe that same engine is in Camaros too. Now, with the 6.2 LT2 and the Z51 package, this car makes 495 horsepower and 470 pound feet of torque. I kind of wish they had just, I don't know, just routed up another five horsepower that make it 500, even just for bragging rights. So at least you're in the 500 range for your Corvette. It's just so close at 495. Now, what can it do with this 495 horsepower? A lot. A lot, a lot. I mean, zero to 60 clocked in under three seconds, the Z51. And I'm telling you guys, around the track, back roads, this car is seriously, seriously fast. To help that is a brand new eight-speed Tremec developed dual clutch transmission. So DCT, none of that automatic, not so great transmission that was in the C7. I was not a fan of the eight-speed auto that was found in the C7. The other big news is you can't get a manual transmission at all anymore. This is a Corvette without a manual. You can only get this eight-speed DCT. Is that sad? I mean, I like having a manual transmission, but this DCT is really, really good. Now we're out of the park. We can open it up a bit. Yeah, you see, listen to those shifts. It's like flawless. Let's talk about the exterior styling. So where you put the engine and what wheels are being driven, that really dictates a lot of proportions and therefore the C8 follows that trend and immediately looks a lot more exotic than the outgoing generation. You look at it and you're like, oh wait, the hood is no longer enormously long. There's something back there. It looks like an engine. Got the big intakes on the side with those kind of angled blades. From the front, I'm a huge fan of the C8 styling. I mean, it fits in with a lineup of Lamborghinis and Ferraris. It looks properly exotic. Around back, uh, that's where my personal tastes don't quite align with the styling of the current C8. Is it bad? I don't think it's bad. I still think it looks cool, but I don't love it as much. I think it looks a little more squared off, but if you note, look at a C8R race car with a wide body. That looks really good. It seems like the car was designed with that in mind, and I'm hoping the higher up, more aggressive uh, aerodynamics packages and body styling for like a 
Z06 or a ZR1 or whatever equivalent model of that will bring that added aggression. This car here is a 2LT with a Z51 package. So we've got some added things with the wing out back, a little more aggressive. We've got bigger brakes, red calipers back there. Uh, what else is on for the Z51? Red mist paint. That's not Z51 specific, but red mist paint looks really nice. It's metallic paint. I believe it's uh, about $995 optional paint. Overall, everything comes together to make the C8 a really good looking, I think it's my favorite looking generation of Corvette overall. I still love the way like a C7 Grand Sport or a C7 Z06 looks, um, but as a, just a Stingray, I'm a big fan of the C8. On the inside, massive steps. I would say even a bigger step than just moving the engine. It's, I mean, it's, it's great in here. The only weird thing is the giant wall of buttons, which you get used to. I've been spending a week with it. As soon as I got back into the car after not being in a C8 for a year, I was like, uh, which button is my seat heater and which button is the passenger? I did a bit of guessing, checking, and figured that out, but this big wall of buttons divides the cabin. It's so driver focused. That's the first thing I noticed when I got in the car last year. I was like, wow, everything is just angled at the driver. The passenger would have to awkwardly reach over to get to this little eight inch infotainment screen where I've got wireless CarPlay running. On In the middle, we have this big digital reconfigurable dash uh, that brings up great information. When you go between drive modes like sport, tour, or track, it'll completely rearrange it. Track really takes it down just a horizontal tachometer and your important pieces of data uh, regarding your vehicle status and things like that. We do have a heads up display there, a square steering wheel. That's uh, definitely a unique thing. Unique thing. We've had square bottom, right? Square bottom steering wheels are a thing, like flat bottom steering wheel, not square, because uh, you get more clearance above your knees but square off top looks a little bit different, but it helps the visibility up front. I don't mind it really. Oh man. And this car is still just so fast. Finishing up a couple more things on the interior. You hear me clicking off these fixed metal paddle shifters. They are very, very nice. Uh, nice response and the transmission gives you very quick shifts too. We have the Bose sound system, which is great. Uh, electronic push button to open the doors. The roof does come off for the coupes. You don't have to buy the convertible for that. And then we have the GT2 seats in this one with the red seat belt. So a little bit of carbon fiber. They're actually pretty comfortable. I've lost some weight since last time I drove the C8. So I actually fit a lot more comfortably in these seats for sure. Visibility is good. We've got lots of tech and convenience features, blind spot warning, heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel. We have the front lift. We got the camera surround with PDR, the performance data recorder, which upped the uh, resolution. The rear view mirror can become a camera. There's a camera back there, so a full live feed. It, it has all the content, all the tech, all the features, and all the performance to back it up. So speaking about how the performance feels now, a year and a half later on the real world streets, well, it's still really fast and a lot of fun, right? Uh, it puts a big smile on my face. And just the fact that it's mid-engine, it, it puts the power down so well, it feels so controllable. Um, some of the Z06s and the ZR1 started to feel a little tail happy, right? The, the front engine rear wheel drive with 650 horsepower and that amount of torque to the rear wheels was a handful for sure. And putting more weight out back helps you with that grip. This is down on power, but zero to 60. I mean, under three seconds for a sub $100,000 naturally aspirated sports car is incredible. That is honestly extremely impressive. This would beat both of my cars in the garage to 60 without even trying. Now, is there anything I don't like about the driving experience? I think as time has gone on and I've spent some more, more time in a couple other sports cars, this engine just doesn't do it for me. Objectively, is it good? Yeah, it makes great power, obviously almost 500 horsepower. Um, paired to the dual clutch, it's great and it gets this car up and performs very well, but it's missing the emotional part of it. It only revs to 6,500 RPM and that's pretty low. Especially when you think like, Something like my Shelby 350R, which revs to 8250, the R8's at 8500, you got 911 GT3's revving to 9000. I mean, those are just much more exotic vehicles and engines. And I'm just doing a little turnaround in the parking lot. The C8 here, the LT2 doesn't quite do that for me. Um, is there anything else I don't like? No, no. 
<laughs> I, I'm so happy to say that a year later getting to try it out and living with it. It still does everything so well. <laughs> now this car has the Z51 package, which I think is an absolute must do. You have to option it on because it brings so many things. And in order to match it aftermarket, if you were just to buy it without it, <laughs> you'd spend double the price. It's, I think, just under $5,000. And you get magnetic ride, you get the different exhaust, different ratio, uh, final drive ratio, gear ratio, um, bigger brakes, aero. Like, it's, it's a huge list of things. The summer tires, Michelin PS4S, which this car has almost brand new PS4S is on it right now. It's almost a no, actually, not almost. It is absolutely a no-brainer. If you're going out to buy a C8 Stingray, get the Z51 package. Magnetic ride means it rides very comfortably. It's more comfortable than my R8 on not so brilliant roads. Uh, it, it's all around, it turns it into a really serious performance car. I have very specifically went and sought out a Z51 package car when we were at the track at Spring Mountain to drive it and it was incredible. They actually allowed us to do this autocross thing with a Z51 mag ride and then a non-magnetic ride car. And it, There was a difference, there was absolutely a difference there. Um, other things in terms of living with it, practicality is pretty good. You have the front trunk and the rear trunk. The rear trunk isn't like lengthwise that deep. It's the width of the car and you can put some stuff in there. Like I've got my tripods back there, a little backpack, some detailing supplies, but you won't be putting like a big luggage case back there. The front trunk is also pretty practical too. We've got remote start. It looks good. Sounds pretty good. And it's fast. <laughs> Here's another thing that you might not think about when considering a sports car, but the fuel economy for the seat's really good. It's got cylinder deactivation, so if you're just in regular like street mode and things like that, it'll turn into a V4. And fuel economy, you can touch 30 mpg on the freeway. 8-speed DCT definitely helps, and just the cylinder deactivation combines to mean this thing is more fuel efficient than most sports cars that make 500 horsepower, um, which is a convenient thing for sure. The way I've been driving it, we're averaging 14.2 mpg, but that's just what I do when I have a fun sports car for a week. <laughs> if we talk about value, this car as option, a 2021 coupe, 2LT uh, Z51 is just over $82,000, I believe. I looked at the window sticker when I first got the car in that price range, so 80 to 85. Can you option a C8 to over $100,000? Yes, I verified yesterday, a C8 coupe, C, uh, a convertible easily, because it costs a bit more, but the coupe, I was checking all the boxes, 3LT, carbon this, and painting this, and different seatbelts here. You can get it to $100,000. The unfortunate thing is due to supply, demand, all of that, right? Economic forces at play, prices on seats have been insane. The whole vehicle market has gone crazy, right? A lot of vehicles are significantly up in price. Actually, both of my cars I could sell for more than I bought them for, even though I have no intention of doing that. The whole market has gone up um, and seats are especially there. A lot of dealerships have been charging dealer markup, at which point you're starting to, you're, you're just essentially paying extra profit for the dealership at that point. And um, that hurts because at $85,000, this is an unbelievably great sports car. At $115,000, you're starting to touch upon things like a 991.1 GT3, you're touching upon uh, R8s, um, used Ferraris, Gallardos, things like that. Now those are all much older vehicles um, and this is gonna destroy them in every metric beyond just the emotional engine thing I'm talking about, right? Like very few cars can match the 9,000 RPM scream of a Porsche flat six. That's one of those fabulous engines I've ever driven. I love it. Well, the 4.0, the 3.8 exploded itself. So the 4.0 is the better one. Anyways, um, yeah, that, it, it's, it's hard to justify the value of anything against this. What, I spent some time in a GT500, the Shelby GT500. Similar amount of money, way more power, but it, it, was it better on track? Yeah, it, it was just way more powerful and a bit more sharp and it came on Cup 2 tires and a more aggressive aero, so um, that definitely helps that car. But similar DCT experience, uh, that I think would be the biggest challenge if you're looking in an American sports car space. I also personally have looked at things like a AMG GTR or even like a 911 Turbo. It's kind of crazy. There's a good amount of options in that $100,000-ish space right now, um, 80 to 100,000. What the C8 sits in there as 
something you can drive all year round, daily drive it. They're, these were driven in the winter. This came on winter tires, and I was like, hey guys, it's uh, 80 degrees this weekend. Could I please have summer tires on the car, please? And the Chevy team graciously accommodated and swapped on some PS4S for me to uh, check it out or experience it fully this weekend. So I guess to, to summarize, do I still think it's the absolute best car under $100,000? Um, with some of the stuff out there used and the fact that a GT500, I was like, oh my God, I want one and I love my GT350R. I'm going to have to retract that statement a little bit. Is it still awesome? Absolutely. Do I want to buy one? Still kind of, yeah, but it's becoming too redundant with the cars I have. What I'm really excited about are the higher performance versions with a more charismatic engine. You turn the engine and this C8, this platform, this setup and the looks to exotic like supercar levels of a really unique engine, man, it's, it's gonna be hard to justify anything else over this car. So in summary, is the C8 Stingray still awesome? Absolutely. We're into the 2021 model year now. This car is a 21. You can get a convertible version, which I personally wouldn't bother because you just you can take the roof off this, which I will do this afternoon once I finish filming this video. Uh, it's got plenty of storage space. It's comfortable. It is very capable. It looks cool. I've gotten a lot of compliments just this week. I think part of it is the red mist paint and the fact that people aren't used to seeing uh, a mid-engine Corvette yet. There's a few of them out there, but um, it's not like you see them as often as maybe a C6 or a C7, but it, it checks a lot of the boxes. Almost all the boxes, a lot of the boxes. I like this thing a lot. Make sure you check out the full, full review I did uh, last year. That video turned out great, talking about more of the technical specs and things like that, and then also the track video, right? Getting to track the C8 when it first came out, chasing down C701, that was a ton of fun. Did a living with a C8 vlog too, more behind the scenes type of things, and I will actually do a video comparing this directly to my R8, and we'll talk about how it stacks up, because I'll give you a I guess this is a little bit of a spoiler. It doesn't look that great for the R8. <laughs> Thanks for all the support, guys.